sing with us, church? I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus fled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands and feet. I see your arm, the curse of trees.
sending Jesus on to die on the cross for us to take away our sin so that we would have the opportunity to have our sins forgiven and to be redeemed and made right with you thank you Jesus for all that you've done you are a great God we worship you today sing this church oh how he loves and me
Morning, Sabino Road Baptist Church. I wanted to say thank you for joining in on a different format than we uh, normally do here. I hope that this time of teaching is beneficial and edifying uh, like it normally is. I did want to say if you are a guest, I want to say thank you for tuning in as well. Um, I hope this time is encouraging for you. I hope that the life groups through Zoom went well beforehand and uh, we hope to get better and better as, these, uh, as time moves forward. We'll be in Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 26, but we'll also be in the parallel passage in Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 35 through 41. The title of today's message is Strength in the Storm. Several years back, or many years back at this point, when I lived with my mom still, I remember we had m mice in the attic, and we were needing to get rid of them. And, uh, but before we did, I remember pulling a box out of the attic, and, and always the prankster, I couldn't r resist the opportunity. So uh, when my mom wasn't looking, I managed to stuff like a gray stuffed animal in the, uh, in the box, and when... Uh, I was walked up to her and, and, I, and I handed her the box and, and threw the stuffed animal all over her and my mom's reaction was absolutely hilarious. She was screaming and yelling and she fell over backwards and I remember uh, uh, screaming and yelling not out of fear but out of laughter and I fell over backwards as well. Uh, and you see, uh, fear can make us act in very strange ways. Fear can change our thinking. It can change our actions. You know, storms of life come in many forms, and that's the passage that we'll be looking at today. Our country and the world is dealing with coronavirus issues, and that's why we're taking our precautions today. But storms come in many forms, in the form of a virus, or family issues, or health issues, or whatever the issue may be storms come in a variety of ways, and when they do come, they are challenging. Many times when storms come, fear, worry, panic are our natural reactions, but it's important to know, church, that that is not our only option. That God's Word and God Himself says that there is a, a better way. So I hope we get this out of today's message is that when storms hit, that we know who we are and we know who our Savior is. Read along with me in Matthew chapter 8. We look in verses 23 through 26. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. That's talking about Jesus. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And then they went and woke him up, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, 
Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? So will you join with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time of worshiping you through your word. Lord, I thank you that in the storms of life that you are steady and strong and we can trust you. Lord, I pray that you would encourage us, that you would challenge us through your teaching this morning. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number one that we'll be looking at today is stop fearing stormy circumstances. And we see this in verses 23 through 25. So stop fearing stormy circumstances. Now, I want to give a little context before we get into our passage today. Uh, As we look through the Gospel of Matthew, first we've seen the king's pedigree and we've seen uh, that who this who this king is where he came from is is God uh, is Jesus really God as the Bible says and so we've seen the pedigree of the king and then through the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount we've seen the principles of the king uh, the things that God values the thing that God cares about the things he wants his children to know about him and to care about And in this section of Matthew, we're seeing the king's power. So it's not just that the king has this great pedigree and that he's a a great teacher, but that this king has the power to do what he says he will do. Um, So keeping that context in mind, let's look at our passage for today. We see that these uh, disciples and Jesus are on the Sea of Galilee. It's about 13 miles long and about 8 miles wide. Because of its location around mountains, it is prone to some very serious and sudden storms that can come uh, whooshing down the mountain and can bring violent, sudden storms. And so if you can imagine for a moment on this very small, dingy, uh, fishing-type boat that Jesus and his uh, disciples are, are are on the boat, and and uh, this storm just comes out of nowhere, and it is uh, upon them, and that the, uh, the 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 ship is is rocking back and forth, and we see water is pouring all over uh, the top of the ship, and it's getting into the ship, and uh, there's lightning and thunder, and the clouds are dark, and it's just a a violent and really scary environment. Now the strange thing about this is these are hardened fishermen, or at least several of these men are. These these are guys that have been through a lot of storms. This is not their first time on a boat. Um, This is not their first time in one of these type of storms. But we see in this passage that they are absolutely terrified. They are overwhelmed with what they are seeing, what they're experiencing. You remember seeing the movie The Titanic when the the musicians were calmly and and gracefully playing their instruments while the ship was going down? Well, that's the opposite of what is happening here. Uh, The disciples are in a, a tumultuous, chaotic situation, and they are acting terrified. And if that's not strange enough, or at least the storm that they're experiencing, at least the strange part is what Jesus is doing in this, in this whole scenario. We, they said that uh, they, were, they were swamped by the waves, and, and uh, then they find Jesus, and he was asleep. Now, uh, at least initially, this gives a, a beautiful picture of Jesus' humanity, that Jesus had been teaching and ministering to the point of, absolute exhaustion that this storm as terrific and terrible as it um, is as it was was not enough to wake Jesus up um, as tired um, as he was so it's sort of a comical scene on the outside you see these uh, disciples in there man they're they're trying to scoop water out of the boat and they're trying to keep their sails straight and they're just that's just absolute chaos and then you cut to Jesus and he's on a cushion and just <laughs> sleeping. Uh, the day away. 
Um, it's sort of funny to think about. Eventually, the disciples recognize their absolutely helpless state, and they cry out to Jesus. And they say, save us, Lord, we are perishing. This was a serious situation, and they were very concerned. They were desperate men taking desperate action. They ran out of human solution. They ran out of what they would normally do, and so then they run to Jesus. You know, the storms of life often bring fear. It's hard to go through storms and not be afraid. And fear is a powerful, gut-wrenching emotion. And it powerfully affects us. It powerfully impacts the way that we do things. And I just want to look at a couple of those actions that we are seeing in this passage and things that you've dealt with and that we're currently seeing in our culture as as wrestling with with different aspects of fear. First of all, we can see that fear can paralyze. Fear can grip not just the body, but fear can grip the heart. Um, It can take your breath away. I remember one time on a on a hiking expedition that uh, we were really high up, and we were uh, me and a, a buddy of mine, and and we were a little bit lost, which is not uncommon with me, and and we were we were lost, and 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 I wasn't exactly sure where I was supposed to go, and so we were kind of tentatively looking around, and I remember uh, poking my head so, sort of over this 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 edge, this this rock, and. And when I looked over the edge, uh, there was about a 2,000-foot sheer drop. And and I remember just poking my head over there and it it just uh, involuntarily just taking my breath away, just going, oh, boy, that's that's a long ways down. Um, I was afraid. Uh, Storms of life, fear can do that. It can take your breath away. It can paralyze you. But as believers, we have to be careful. You see, fear can hinder us. It can hinder us from obedience. It can hinder us from doing what God has called us to do. It hinders us from acting the way that we're supposed to act. Fear can hinder us from trusting Christ the way that we are supposed to trust Christ. You see, fear is a powerful force. And it can paralyze believers and keep them from doing what they should be doing. You know, fear also leads to worry and to panic. You don't have to spend a lot of time right now. You just simply have to go to Sam's or Costco and you realize that there are a lot of people panicked and a lot of people worried about a lot of things. So at the heart of worry is mistrust, mistrust of God, mistrusting that God is good, mistrusting that God is wise, mistrusting that God is capable, mistrusting that God knows what he's doing. And so when we worry, we have to acknowledge as believers that we are saying in our hearts that, God, I'm not sure you know what you're doing. I've got a bunch of children, and, and uh, they like to help with get the groceries out of the car, and then I like to hand them to them. And, but little kids sometimes don't understand their own strengths or their abilities or inabilities, and so I'll hand them a bag, and I'll say, you, you got this? Uh, you got this? And, and they're, oh, yeah, Dad, I got this. Yeah, no problem, Dad. And, uh, and many times when they think they, they got it, they don't got it, and they spill stuff and they drop stuff, and such is the way with children. But we do that with God all the time, too. When we worry, we say, God, are, are, you, are you sure you, you got this? Uh, are you sure you can handle this circumstance? Are you, can, are you sure you can handle this, this problem that I'm going through? Are you sure you can handle the, the future, the things that I, I'm thinking about? Do you, do you got this, God? The fear and worry don't have to be rational to affect you in very real ways ways. The fear can and often does lead to worry 
and to panic. And as believers, that's not a path that we want to go down. Fear comes in the form of panic, and it can paralyze you, but fear can also rob you of your joy. See, even knowing God's power and God's love, and the disciples knew that, they, they'd experienced Christ's love, they experienced Christ's power, but they faltered. And even though we've experienced God's love and God's power, we are prone to falter. We're prone to doubt. and We are prone to fear. And one of my favorite stories by Max Locato, he, still, he tells the story of Chippy the parakeet. And Chippy was just a, a normal parakeet, and, and he was owned by a, by a little old lady. And, and this is a, a true story that uh, was in a, a, a news report. And Chippy the parakeet was uh, minding his own business, singing his little song, and, and, uh, and his owner decided that she was going to clean out Chippy the parakeet's um, his little cage. And so she went there, and she began vacuuming the bottom of his cage. But while she was doing that, uh, the phone rang. And when she did that, she accidentally sucked <laughs> Chippy down into the vacuum cleaner. So, poof, uh, Chippy was, uh, at least for a moment, uh, no more. So the, 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 the lady hangs up the phone and frantically gets Chippy out of the, uh, the vacuum cleaner. And she finds him, and he, he's still in the vacuum cleaner. He's still alive. He's okay, but he's um, terrified. And so she, she gets Chippy out, and he's all covered in dust. And so she quickly runs him over to the sink and rinses him off with water. And, and Chippy is, after she does that, she realizes that Chippy is uh, freezing cold. So this is all true stories. So then she, she runs over to uh, the bathroom and, and plugs in her hair dryer and, 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 and blows off Chippy and, and dries him up. And, and she puts Chippy uh, back in his cage seemingly no worse for wear. And, and the news report says, through Max Locato, that, that the reporter came back a, a few days later and to, to, to hear what happened of old Chippy. And she said, you know, is, is Chippy okay? Everything all right? And she said, yeah. And then the, the, the owner of the parakeet said, yeah, Chippy, is, he's, he's okay. But he doesn't sing like he used to. And he, he just kind of sits in his cage with his eyes wide open. You know, fear can do that to us as well. You'll be sitting there, minding your own business, living your own life, doing the things that God has called you to do, and then, man, a storms of life can just come in without you looking for it, without you expecting it, and just can completely change the trajectory of your life. You know, Isaiah 12, 2 says, I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. But you know, when fear has gripped us, when it has paralyzed us, when it has panicked us, it can rob our joy. See, fear can lead us to act in ways that are not consistent with our faith. Fear can lead us to, to act in ways that are ultimately harmful and uh, not good for the child of God. And so we've got to be careful. So I encourage you, church, to stop fearing stormy circumstances. And God has given us a better way. Point number two is this. Start trusting the storm breaker. And we'll see this in verses 26 through 27. So read along with me. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this? But even the winds and the seas obey him. Start trusting the storm breaker. So Jesus awakes before he deals with the storm, before he deals with the circumstance, he deals with his disciples. See, the disciples had a lot of fear, 
and just a little bit of faith. And Jesus asks them after they wake him up from this terrifying ordeal for them, and he says, why are you afraid? Now, that's sort of a, uh, the, the disciples we learn from this passage and the one in Mark, that they are perplexed by Jesus' calm. Uh, uh, why are we afraid? Jesus, why aren't you afraid? Are, are, are you crazy? <laughs> Don't you understand what is happening here? But then Jesus does something incredible. Jesus gets up from where he was napping. He goes to the outside and deals with the storm. Jesus speaks to the storm and miraculously, surprisingly from the disciples' perspective, the storm obeys. See, the storm knew who its master was. So uh, imagine the scene with me for just a, a moment that Jesus goes out there and like I said, the, uh, the waves are still crashing over the boat, that the disciples are still hanging on. They're trying not to be tossed out of the water. There's still lightning and there's still thunder and, and it's absolutely a chaotic situation but then the creator comes out on the boat and we know from mark what he actually says and he says peace be still <laughs> and then the storm stops and just as quickly as it came by the storm goes away the ship stops rocking the dark clouds move away. The sun begins to shine and birds start chirping. It was a shocking event for these disciples. We learn from the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark that the disciples were amazed, but they were also afraid. They realized instantly that God was in the boat with them. Maybe up to this point they didn't grasp who Jesus was, and at least to a certain extent they didn't grasp who Jesus was and what he was wanting to do until after the cross and after the resurrection. The disciples were amazed and they were afraid because they realized that God was in the boat, that this wasn't simply a healer, this guy wasn't simply a miracle worker. This guy wasn't simply a profound teacher. But this was God. This wasn't buddy Jesus. This was the same God that the Psalms talk about who rules over the oceans and nature. And that was the God that was in the boat with them. And so they asked this question in verse 27. After they were done marveling, they said, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Well, that's an appropriate question to ask. And Jesus, the storm stopper, the storm calmer, the storm breaker, stops a storm. They realized the power of, in the boat was stronger than the power outside of the boat. What they, what they were afraid of just a couple of moments before was this chaotic, really scary storm paled in comparison to the power that was in the boat with them. What was the, the outside was not nearly as powerful as what was happening on the inside. I want you to know, church, that God is bigger than any problem that you and I will face. Our sovereign God rules all. There is nothing that is beyond His ability or His power. I want you to know, church, that our God knows all. That Jesus was not surprised by this storm when it came. Jesus is not surprised by the storms that come in your life. 
Jesus is not surprised by pandemics. Jesus is not surprised by this virus. Jesus is not surprised by anything. He knows all. We can trust him. Not just that he knows all and can do all, but the Bible says that our God is loving and compassionate. And so not only does he know all and can do all, he cares for you. He cares for this world. He cares for the plight of humanity. If God didn't care about the sufferings and the difficulties of life, then he wouldn't have sent Jesus. And Jesus wouldn't have come. But God does care. God does love his children. God does love the world so much so that he sent Jesus. It's important for us to know, church, that our biggest problem isn't unknown circumstances, but learning to trust an all-knowing Savior in the midst of those circumstances. Circumstances, good and bad, will come and go. As believers, all we need to do, all we need to be focused on is trusting Jesus in the midst of those circumstances. Trusting Him, knowing His will, knowing His heart. Giving control over to Him. I remember one particular occasion, I was with a, a friend, and we went to like this uh, climbing wall uh, building where they had climbing walls all over the place, and they had a climbing rope, and and, uh, and I remember going up this climbing rope, and I was going to go, and it was pretty high, I don't know, 50 or 75 feet in the air, it was, it was pretty high, higher than I would want to fall on the ground, but the problem was, is I have never been rock climbing, and neither had the buddy that it was attached to me, we had ropes on us, and we had the rock climbing stuff, so we had the belay system, and and, uh, and he's supposed to be able to, to let me down or easy without, you know, splatting on the ground, which was the, the, the hope. And, and so I remember climbing up this rope, which was hard to do. And, and by the time I got to it, I really didn't have the strength to go back down. And, and so my buddy was saying, hey, man, let go. And, uh, and I'm looking at the ground, and I'm looking at my buddy who wasn't very big or strong and, and had never helped anybody rock climbing before. And he's saying, let go, let go. And I was like, I don't think I want to let go. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure this is a good idea. But I, that the longer I held on, the more tired I was getting. And if I tried to slide down that rope, I would have hurt myself in all sorts of ways. But eventually, I remember letting go. I remember dropping further and faster than I wanted to for a while. But eventually, he caught up and he did his part. He hung on. And I'm telling you, church, when the storms of life come, there's going to be a tendency for us to hang on to the things that we think that we can control. But God and Jesus is saying, let go. Not let go and let it blow into the ether and, 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 and let's hope for the best. You know, que sera, sera. No, that's, that's, not what, that's not what Jesus is saying. He said, no, let go and give it to me. Whatever circumstance, whatever challenge, whatever storm you're facing, he says, let go of that and give it to me. See, in place of panic, God offers peace. Believers, we don't have to run around terrified and worried. We don't have to be panicked. God has given us peace. Peace of a God who rules all things. Peace of a God who rules our hearts. In place of fear, God has said, I, I want you to live in faith. It's helpful to understand faith simply as trusting God. So instead of living in fear, and all the terrible things that that leads to, he says, I, I want you to live a life of Faith, I want you to trust me. I want you to trust that I, I, I've, I know what I'm do, doing. I want you to know that I, I, I'm working things for your good as one of my children. I want you to trust me. In place of crazy, God gives us confidence. When the whole world seems to be going crazy, we can be confident. It doesn't mean that we're not concerned about things. 
been concerned is a good thing. It means you have a heart for your world and the, and the life that you live. But we can live in confidence. Confidence that our God is good. Confidence that our God is not surprised with the circumstances that we face. So start trusting the storm breaker. And let me close with this story. The story is told of a man, and he was walking home, and um, well, before he did, he saw a, a black cat come across his path. And later on that day, he went to, and he saw his friend, and he was telling his friend, he said, you know, I, I, this black cat came across my path, and uh, I, I was wondering what kind of sort of day, if I'll have a, a bad day. His friend wisely responded, and it said, well, that it depends on whether or not you are a rat or not. You see, knowing who you are dispels fear. Knowing who you are dispels the worries and the fears that we have. See, when storms hit, and they will, and they do, you need to know who you are that you are one of God's children. And I hope that you are. That you are one of God's children, that, that, that He is your heavenly Father. And I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to live in fear. And you get to know who your Savior is. What kind of Savior He is. What He's willing to do for His children. When the storms of life come, Make sure you know who you are and make sure you know who your Savior is. As we move into the invitation time today, how, how are we going to respond to God's Word? I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to give your fears, your worries over to the Lord. Maybe you're really concerned about the, 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 the virus and the circumstances around that. Instead of internalizing those, and, and instead of letting that uh, bring you to, to panic and to worry and sapping your joy, why don't you give that to the Lord? Instead of panicking, why don't you pray? Give that to God this morning. You can trust Him circumstances now and we can trust him with circumstances in the future give your fears give your worries over to the Lord and start trusting him start trusting his heart there's a lot of circumstances that we'll go through in this life that I wouldn't have signed up for if I had a choice in the matter but regardless those circumstances come and we can grow bitter or we can grow better or we can trust the Lord or we can try to trust ourselves. The disciples learn very quickly that trusting themselves is futile. We want to trust Jesus. We want to trust His heart. We want to trust that He cares for His children. Maybe it's an it's a, a act of obedience today in a time of, of prayer to say, Lord, I, I trust you. I give my, my worries, I give my fears to you. I, I trust you, no, no matter what those fears and worries and concerns are. I encourage you to trust Jesus in the most important way, which is as Savior. To become a Christian if you've never done that before. You know, in churches we talk about the good news all the time. But before we talk about the good news, I, I want to talk about what the good news does, and that's because there is bad news. The bad news is, is that every one of us, all people, are sinners. Every one of us have fallen short of God's standards. And because of that, sin must be punished. If God is a good judge, he just can't let sin go unaccounted for. We can trust God. We can trust him that he is not simply going to deal uh, unfairly with the bad that we are dealing with. That we, uh, The bad news is that we are sinners condemned 
and guilty before a holy God, and that hinders our relationship with God, and that hinders our relationship with other people. But the good news is that Jesus came, that He loved humanity so much that He was willing to die on a cross for you and for me. And He took all the sins of the world and He placed them on Himself. All the wrath that we deserve, all the wrath of God, all the punishment that we deserve, that God placed on His Son, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus died, but He rose from the dead, conquering sin and conquering death. And we cannot save ourselves. We don't have to. All we have to do is trust the one that can save us, and that's Jesus. The Bible says we do that by repenting, which simply means to turn from our sin, to, to change our, our mind, and trust Jesus as our Savior. Trust that He is exactly who the Bible says He is, that He is God, that He is God's Son, that He, that he came and he, he, he took the sins of the world, and, and if we trust Him, that He can be our Savior. Turn from your sin. Trust the Savior. Going to church is important. Those are good things. Helping other people, those are good things. Being baptized, those are good things. But none of those things can make you right with God. The only way that you can be right with God is by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you've never done that today, friend, I want you to know that you can contact Sabina Road Baptist Church anytime. You can find us on our, our website or, or, or call us. I, I would love to talk with you if you have questions about where you will spend eternity. I love you, church. I'm praying for you. And I look forward when we get to come back together and worship one another. God bless you.